Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm going to show you a fun way to add motion to your cards. For this particular card I've got a flamingo and when you pull her arm or pull the lever her arm will move. It's going to uh, make the coffee cup go up and down so it looks like she's drinking. This image is from the rabbit hole designs and it's a, a fun little caffeinated flamingo. They've got a, a cute line of caffeinated critters so be sure to check those out. When you're watching me stamp the flamingo I want you to think about images that you already have in your stash. What stamps do you have that you could add motion to? Maybe a bent arm or a straight arm where they could be waving. Maybe legs or wings or tails that would move. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do that. Before we actually stamp out the critter, I'm going to build my background. And you saw me ink blend a horizon, the skyline there. Um, and now I'm using the back of a stamp just to create kind of an island off in the distance. And this is a, a trick I picked up from Jennifer McGuire. It's a good idea. Uh, just gives me an image in the background. And I'm gonna color it in a little bit here, get those edges all the way down. Then I can uh, lift this back up and I'll finish inking the background. You wanna make sure your surface is clean so you don't transfer that ink. Now I'll mask off for the ocean, and I'm just going to cut a wavy line, but the uh, the other piece of tape I'm going to reserve because I will need that for the sand, and you want those to match up perfectly. So for my ocean, I've got two tones of blue, and I'll put the lighter coat everywhere, and then I'll use the darker blue just closer to the horizon. It's darker as it gets further away, and blend those two together. Now I can do the sand, so I want to take that piece of tape that I reserved and match it up. And then I've got the scattered straw to be the bulk of the sand. And I'm not trying to get it perfect because sand has a lot of different color and texture to it. And I'm bringing a little bit of vintage photo and I am very lightly tapping it to the card. And then I'll blend it a bit more with my scattered straw. We've got a quick and easy background, and notice that this card is long. Um, it, it's tall, actually. That's because I'm going to um, die cut my pull tab as well as the card front. And I'm using a stitched rectangle for the card front, and then a stitched um, strip that I will turn into my pull tab. So I die cut those, and then I also grabbed a stitched circle, and... I cut out a little tab for your thumb and save that circle die. You're going to use it again for the card base in a little bit. Now a pull tab should say pull or give you some sort of indication that you should do something. So I'm just going to stamp pull on here and I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black. It's um, This pad isn't super juicy so for words it's nice to get a crisp image. And then I'm going to take a thinner strip that also has the stitched edges there and I'm going to emboss my sentiment on here. And you see me prepping with an anti-static tool. And then I'll line up my image, my sentiment. It says hashtag flamingo fuel. I thought that was cute. And then I'll use Versamark ink. That's a sticky ink. It stays wet long enough to hold my embossing powder which I'm going to sprinkle on some white embossing powder. And for something this small, it's easy to use tweezers to hold it so you don't burn your fingers when you bring in your heat gun. And then get my heat gun there to melt the powder. And you've got a nice sentiment there. Now, um, because I put the anti-static powder on there, I need to clean it up with a Swiffer. And now this is where I'm going to stamp my flamingo. So when you see me ink it up here, I'm going to use the memento again because I'm going to Copic color. I am going to wipe off just with my fingers the part that overlaps. The, the leg holding the coffee cup is drawn on front and I, I want to just kind of erase that little intersection there with my fingers and I'll use a, a Copic liner to just draw that line 
uh, draw his legs straight all the way down. So I'm, I'm just going to stamp above and below it. And I'm also trying to not put too much ink um, where the other leg comes out from underneath his body. And then I'll flip it over and now it's time to stamp the arm holding the coffee cup. And I want to clean it just because it, the face would overlap the, the first face that I already stamped. So I want to make sure that I don't transfer any ink where I don't want it. And now I'm focusing on that arm and I'm trying to uh, wipe away the ink where the arm connects to the body because I'm going to extend that leg, make it a little bit longer up at the top. And unfortunately my paper shifted and I didn't realize it. So it's a, a little smudged here, but no big deal. I've got plenty of paper left. I'll just spin it and stamp it again. So I'm going to disregard that arm that I just stamped. And I'll move my stamp down just a little bit more. Give me plenty of space. And I'm going to cut this out with my scan and cut. Um, so that's why I'm trying not to transfer too much extra ink because I have to basically erase it so my scan and cut doesn't see it later. And now I'll bring in my Copic Multiliner. This is a point three in black and I'm going to make that bent arm a little longer at the top and again since I'm using my scan and cut to cut it out I will draw a line to connect um, the top so it's basically capped off at the top there so that my scan and cut will see a complete um, line that they have to be connected and then on the flamingo body I drew in the two lines for his leg there. And now I'm going to take my white Posca pen, it's a paint pen, and I will erase some of these lines that I don't want my scan and cut to see and get confused by. So, and I don't have to erase all of it, just the parts that are close to it. And then I will quickly color in the bird. And I'm using a couple of shades of R's and then an E double zero for the body and the wings. If you're not interested in watching me color, go ahead and skip ahead about a minute and a half because I'm going to color the bird and then I've also got some die cuts that I'll color in too. And I don't do anything special. I use two to three shades for each section. I've got um, my main color, then I've got highlights and shadows. And I just Googled flamingos to get an idea of how to color them. <laughs> so nothing special or original there. I do like to add shading to the eyeballs, especially since there's big eyes. Um, it helps give a little more dimension. And then I'm coloring in my coffee cup. And a lot of times I go over this twice, just so that you get a lot of color. And then I'm gonna come in with the white paint pen again and I'll get rid of all the little tiny lines that the scan and cut will have a problem with. And then I've die cut some tropical images here and I'm just gonna quickly color these for you too. I could have cut these out of colored paper and then just added some shading to them, but I already had the white cardstock out and I was cutting some other stuff, so it was just as easy for me to do that. Plus it's, it's fun to color and this way I know for sure my colors all match and coordinate with the bird perfectly. And here I'm just using two shades for each one. And just quick, where, where the shadows would be, I've got the darker color, so underneath or on the inside, and then the lighter colors on the outside. Easy peasy. Then I'll go ahead and cut out the bird and the arm with my scan and cut. And see how it cut it out just fine since I erased the edges close to it. While I've also got the outlines in the memory of my scan and cut, I went ahead and I cut out a second arm. That way I can glue those two pieces together and just make it a little stronger. That arm is pretty thin, so I want to give it as much support as I can. And so I glued those together. I'll use an acrylic block to hold it in place. And now I'm going to lay out all of my pieces 
just so I can get an idea of where the flamingo is going to live on the card front so that I can figure out the pivot point. Once I figure out where, where she's going to be and where my lever will be. See, I've got a clear piece of acetate. That's what I'm going to glue the arm to. And I want to just figure out placement for everything here. And I need to attach that arm to the acetate so that I know for sure where to put that pivot point. So I'm going to bring in a piece of super tape from ThermoWeb. And I'll just attach it just to the arm um, all the way down to the elbow. And I'm going to trim it so that it's close. We don't want any tape hanging off the edge. It, it'll pick up dust or hair. So, you know, trim it to, to fit accordingly. And I haven't found an adhesive that works better for acetate. So I, I really like these, uh, the super tape for this. So I'll go ahead and attach it to the bottom of that acetate. And then it's a little bit of an angle there. So I want to trim away the corner of the acetate, as much of the acetate as I can, so that it is less noticeable. The bulk of it will be up underneath the card, but down at the bottom you would see it if I didn't trim it away. Just little details like this help make your card look better. So now I can get rid of some of this other stuff, get it out of the way. And I'll bring in my um, cutting plate. It's just a little pad. So when I cut through, I don't cut all the way through. And now I've got a little pokey tool and I will use that to mark where I want to punch out my acetate and where I'll poke through to the card. So I'm pushing hard enough that it's indenting and it also marked the card base there. So I'll use um, an eighth inch hole punch here through my acetate and that acetate strip is about a quarter inch wide. So I've got plenty of room on either side. I'm not going to pierce the um, acetate and then cut it in half accidentally. Then I can push through to the card base because I'm going to use a mini brad so it can be a small hole for the card base. And I will line those two holes up. And now I need to figure out where the slit will go underneath. It's got to go underneath the pivot point but not stick out from underneath the body. So I just mark it with a pencil. And now I can bring in a craft knife. And then I'll just cut a slit. And this is about, mm, about three quarters of an inch wide. Maybe a little less, maybe five eighths of an inch. And I'll use that pokey tool to open it up a little bit more. It will be covered by the flamingo, but I want the acetate to, to slide back and forth smoothly. And then I'll line up the holes and I'm going to go ahead and stick a mini brad through. And now I've got the acetate on the back so it can attach to the pull tab up top. And it's going to go ahead and swing that arm back and forth. And I'm just testing it and make sure that the placement is right. And I want to go ahead and get my palm tree put down. I knew I was going to glue this one flat but it could still affect the motion if I'm not careful. So I want to just get it in the right place. And then I'm testing it out because it's fun to do. <laughs> and I'm also marking um, how far up I want the cup to travel. So this is the farthest I want it to travel in one direction. So that will be pushed all the way in. So I marked it with that pokey tool again. Now I'm going to punch through the, the paper strip and then also the acetate. And I'm going to take a second brad and I will attach it through the back. And when I open these brads up, I am not pushing it super tight. I'm opening it so it's secure, but not so tight that it's hard to move. Once I've got that in place, I can go ahead and trim up the extras. And I'm going to have foam tape all the way around the edges, so I want to leave a barrier. I didn't put the, the pull tab all the way up at the top. 
I wanted to leave enough room to put foam tape around the outside edges. So now I can go ahead and glue down my other pieces. I'm not gluing the bird down yet. She's going to go down last just so that I know for sure I've got her where I want her. She's the star of the show. So I want to get everything else in place first. And so I glued my leaves down flat. Anything that will come near the motion parts, you want to get as flat as possible to the card so that they won't get in the way and they won't catch. But my sentiment and that big pink flower, the hibiscus, those can be popped up a little bit. It gives you more dimension. And it's far enough away that it won't affect the movement of the card at all. So I'm just figuring out placement there. And I will trim that sentiment strip down so that it can live underneath the flower, but not extend beyond the petal. So I'll stick that in place. And then I'm going to add a little more foam tape around the edges of the, the flower, not the petal that overlaps. I'll, I'll glue that flat to the sentiment strip. But the other petals are supported. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue down the, the stamen. And my little purple flowers, I'm going to add a little dimension just by pushing it with my finger into the palm of my hand. That just pops up the petals a little bit. And I'll go ahead and glue those into place. And the third one I want to actually put in her hair. I thought that would be fun. And then you see me go around the pink flower petals, just lifting them a little bit so they have a little dimension as well. And I'm going to go ahead and glue the, the flower to her hair at this point so I don't lose it. And I kind of pop it up a little more too. But I'm still not attaching her. Again, she's going to go on at the end after I get everything else in place. So now I'll go ahead and trim off the pieces that hang over the edge. If I were making this card again, I might make the, uh, the rectangle, the outer edge, smaller. Maybe half an inch smaller all the way around so that I could leave th these pieces on. I, I like the way they looked. I kind of regretted cutting those off um, and just put them on a, a, a card base that allowed those to be there. But I still like the way this card turned out. Now I've got a top folding A2 card base and I need to cut out the thumb tab there too otherwise it's not going to do you much good. So I'm going to line up that circle again and then I will open up my card base and run it through so that I'm only cutting through the top layer. And I'll make sure that that's in the right spot. And I'm going to trim off a little more of that acetate so that it does not come very high to the top. And I'm also rounding the corner of the acetate a little bit so that when I have the foam tape in place, it won't poke into it at all. Now I'll bring in my foam tape and I'm only using a single layer. That, the brads I'm using are, are pretty small. They're thin, just mini brads. So a single layer of foam tape is plenty of dimension. And I'll put it all the way around. And now I'm going to add a, another quick piece underneath the pull tab. But I'm going to use the foam tape as a, a guide, a stop, actually. Um, so that's as far out as I want the, the tab to pull. So I'm going to put the foam piece there so it will stop the acetate from pulling out any further. Then I added a few more pieces inside. And I will go ahead and pull off the release paper, line it up, and put it on my card. And we are almost done. I'm going to test it a little bit just because it's fun. <laughs> and now I can go ahead and add the flamingo to the card. I'm going to double up a piece of foam tape, and I'm sorry I'm off camera a little bit there, but I've got a double layer of foam tape, and I'm just going to add two pieces, one to the slipper and one to the tail, and that will allow the arm to pass underneath. It gives it plenty of room because it's a double layer of foam, so the arm can pull underneath it without any problem. And the head I will end up gluing flat to the card base 
so that the card can or the arm can then come up in front of her mouth. And I'm just going to make sure that that's enough space. And she, it still passes through just fine. And I do give the card a little bit of a, a, a curl with my fingers. I'm uh, rolling the body out just a little bit and the neck um, in the other direction, kind of like an S. So the, the face is going to go flat to the card and the body will puff out over that brad. And I'm not getting any adhesive near that brad. I want that brad to move freely. And everything seems to work. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the, the face down until it dries. I'm actually going to put a block over it because I want it to dry flat. And then we're pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of um, aqua shimmer pen to uh, the entire flamingo. And I'm going to put it on her legs as well. And you can move the tab and get the whole leg. And then I add it to the purple flowers. But I decided that wasn't quite enough shine. So for the flowers and that coffee mug, I came in with some stickles. And I'm going to add some, some chunkier glitter here. And then I wanted to highlight her eye a little bit as well. So I've got a little diamond glaze. And I always test that out first. Both of those can come out more than you want them to. And then I decided all the dimension was down at the bottom and I wanted to draw the eye up a little higher. So I'm going to add um, another palm frond and I'm just using another piece of doubled up foam and a little more glue. And I'll stick that in place. And then that finishes up this card. So what stamps do you have in your stash that you could add motion to? Maybe you've got a ballerina up on point, you can get her legs to cross, or a character waving, a tail that would wag, that kind of thing. Maybe um, a little character with his arm holding a kite or something like that. So if you'd like to get your hands on this fun little flamingo stamp, you can uh, find it at therabbitholedesigns.com. I've got links on my blog um, and I'm also up on the Rabbit Hole Designs blog. You can find links below. If you like today's video, please go ahead and subscribe and click the bell. Here are a few more videos where I've added motion to my cards. And as always, thanks for watching.